Hello, my name is Albert Kim, and today I'll be talking about splines. A little background. This video assumes that you're familiar with functions in R, the tidyverse suite of packages, in particular, ggplot2 for data visualization, dplyr for data wrangling, and a little bit of the broom package. And finally, it assumes that you're familiar with normally distributed random variables with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Much of statistical slash machine learning centers around modeling, as captured by this equation. Where? Y is an outcome variable of interest. X are predictor variables. F of X is a function known as the systematic component of the model, otherwise known as the signal. And epsilon is an unsystematic error component. You can think of this as noise. So much of machine learning consists of separating the signal, this component here, from the noise. For example, let's take a look at Kaggle's Russian housing market competition. Kaggle is a website that hosts machine learning competitions. In particular, this one involves predicting real estate prices in Russia. Where? The outcome variable y is the sale price of a property, which you need to model as a function of 300 predictor variables x, including such information like the number of rooms, the neighborhood, and the surface area. Question. What is that functional form f of x? Well, we don't know it. And what do we do when we don't know something? We fit slash estimate it. This is a poor example to go over in this tutorial because 300 predictors is an unwieldy number. Rather, let's take the simplified scenario of only one predictor variables x and we'll consider only one class of models to fit known as splines. So first, let's consider this rather complicated looking function f and plot it for values of x between 0 and 1. Again, you can think of this as the systematic component of the model or the signal. But remember, in any model, there's also an unsystematic error component, epsilon. We're going to set epsilon to be normally distributed. with mean 0 and standard deviation 2. And remember that y is equal to the sum of these two components. Let's now plot these points. We see now that surrounding the true systematic component of the model, there is now noise that's been added. But in a typical machine learning situation, you are not going to know the red curve. Because if we knew the red curve, then why would we, tr we be trying to fit slash estimate it? In a typical machine learning situation, you will only be given these points. And now it is up to you to estimate and fit for that red curve. In other words, you want to separate out the signal from the noise. One class of methods for this to this end are splines. So before I explain these components, let me just show what it does. You can think of splines as a piece of string that you fit through the points with a certain amount of wiggle. This wiggle is control, controlled by a parameter known as the degrees of freedom df. Why don't we increase this to say 30? We now see there is much more wiggle or flexibility in our fitted model. 
Let's take this even further. There's even more flexibility or wiggle in this model. Let's break these components down slowly. Running this function smooth.spline is where the fitting of the model occurs. Unfortunately, this output down here is not very useful. So we use the augment function from the broom package to get our results in tidy data format. So for our 500 points, we have the X value, the Y value, but more importantly, the fitted value, the fitted value of the spline in blue. Note that the mechanics of this are a little bit difficult to fit in a 10 minute tutorial, but I will say that the computation of that blue curve involves linear algebra. Now, let's, conf uh, let's compare multiple degrees of freedom in a pre-computed plot. We see here that when degrees of freedom are only two, all we have is a straight line. And in this case, it does a very poor job of fitting the points. In the case of degrees of, 90, degrees of freedom 99, already we can sort of surmise that this function is more complicated than it needs to be. But how do we know which of these fitted models is best? Remember that in this case, we know the true function. We know the curve in red. In this case, it appears that degrees of freedom 10 does the best job. Now, an exercise. Here are a new set of points based on a new function f and new epsilon error. With your finger, trace what you think the red curve is, what the true systematic component of the model is. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Now, let's fit a spline to these using an arbitrarily chosen number of degrees of freedom, 10. This is our estimate of the red curve. Now, let's reveal the red curve, the red curve that was at the backbone of these points. In this case, the points have as systematic component, this piecewise function in red, but also ra normally distributed random noise with standard deviation 12. In this case, there is more noise than the previous example. How well would you say that this blue curve fits the red curve? Nah. The question is now, how do we know how good our fitted model is if we don't know what the true model in red is. One way to ascertain this is using a method known as cross-validation. To recap, much of modeling centers around the simple formula here, which combines both a systematic component, f of x, and an unsystematic error component. In other words, signal and noise. One method for estimating f, or to separate the signal from the noise, is splines, where the degrees of freedom tunes the flexibility of the model. For a future lesson, we could investigate how good our fitted model is, even when we don't know the true model. You can do this using a method known as cross-validation. Please note that the source code for this spline exercise can be found at bit.ly slash rudeboybert underscore splines. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.